I am back. I hope you didn't miss me too much. Climate change denial is one of the things, one of the bigger things that I'm yet to tackle on this channel. It's huge. And to give it proper justice, I'd probably have to devote as much time to that as I have for Flat Earth. So where do I start? How about a video that says, the laws of science prove that climate change is a hoax? Seems like a good place to start, doesn't it? Hello all and welcome along to another episode of Tin Fall Tuesday with me, Simon Dan. Thank you very much for joining me. Saved by Grace thinks that climate change is a hoax. And not only that, he feels like that the laws of science back him up. We simply must take a look at this. Away we go, guys. I'll introduce a question. So, I think it's Newton's third law of thermodynamics where he says that Sorry, whose laws of thermodynamics? Newton's? We'll let that one slide, but it's not a good start, is it? For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. Yes, that's Newton's laws of motion, but I'm sure you knew that. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. Does this not law not destroy climate change? In short, no. Thank you all very much for joining me. I have been Simon Dan. Have yourselves a great week and jokes. So if in my action I choose to pollute, how do we not know that at some point, in some way, this sets in course an equal and opposite reaction of counter pollution? We don't, but of course we also know that this is not how that law works. This law is about two interacting objects, not some shoddy butterfly effect which you're describing here. Some people might say that um, it only works in motion, because Newton was studying motion. Indeed, and that is what I'm saying. But how do we know? How do we know, know that by, you know, taking one element and changing the nature of it, you know, burning it, turning it into a gas or ash or whatever, that it does not have to respond in an elemental nature to keep the world in its state of um, uh, homeostasis. Yeah, I see what you're saying, but that's a biological phrase. Let's go with equilibrium. Or whatever so that the world can continue to go on as long as it needs to go on. Well, the Earth kind of does that, but it's got nothing to do with the third law of motion. There are carbon banks, if you will, that lock carbon up. The sea and rocks are good examples of this. Also, plants do a great job of processing some of that carbon by turning it to energy for themselves and oxygen for the atmosphere. However, if we as a species start pumping lots of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, these carbon banks and the uh, recycling process that the plants use can't quite keep up. And after a while, there'll be a bit of a buildup of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. And as we know, carbon dioxide is a greenhouse gas, which means it's pretty efficient at locking in heat. You know, I think it's pretty simple and easy to understand that, that there are things going on in the world today and people that are making choices and they don't understand that it has an equal and an opposite reaction and they can't understand the reaction. So for instance, we've seen scientists release, you know, types of bugs and uh, that are not native to an area to try to combat mosquitoes or ants or whatever. And every time they do this, we have an equal and opposite reaction that we're not counting for, and it creates the opposite nuisance. Yeah, this is not a good example, and again, cannot be explained by Newton's third law of motion. So instead of maybe having those ants as a nuisance, the, the thing that we we used to counteract the ant nuisance then becomes the nuisance. And we've seen this over and over and over again in populations of things. So I believe that it applies to 
the nature of the world because that's the only way the world stays in balance. And 200 years ago, I would have completely agreed with you. However, this is the world now. This is what we are doing. This year so far, 17 billion tonnes of CO2 has been released into the atmosphere due to human activity. It will be over 40 billion tonnes once the year is out. And you'll see people talk about this in all kinds of ways. They'll say that the world has to be in balance. And if you set apart one course of events and there has to be another course of events, they'll talk about like the yin and the yang uh, and, and stuff like that. And well, I won't. They have those symbols that have, uh, that have permeated uh, every religion. And as we see now that it, it, it permeates um, science and uh, the third law of uh, thermodynamics, that for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. Why does he keep saying thermodynamics? So if I choose to fire up my car and, and create some emission, then maybe somehow that sets in, in, uh, sets in a course of events because those elements that I have burned and turned turn the nature of uh, into a gas or whatever, um, a gas or a pollutant, then causes an effect that another, you know, uh, balance has to set, a, set about a restorative process. Technically, there will be a moment in time where these pollutants are recycled. But turning on your car is the equivalent of a drop of water in the Pacific Ocean. So how stupid, you know, or, or illogical are we as people to believe that my actions can have any change on the way the world rotates? Like something that I do can change the climate. Not by yourself, no. But if millions of individuals, organizations, companies and governments do the same, then we will see a change. There's no evidence of this whatsoever. That one single person can change the climate. No, there probably isn't. People have been saying that, that yes, we're, we're doing things that are destroying the climate and blah, 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 blah. But there's no evidence of this whatsoever. The supposed global warming, we're supposed to be getting warmer and warmer. And if you look at it, we're trending warmer and warmer. Yet, the United States has the coldest snap it's had in, I don't know, maybe recorded history. Here's a frank idea which you may not have thought of before. Um, the US is not the entire world. Also, climate change doesn't mean it's going to be really hot all of the time. But we certainly will see more extremes of weather, which we are seeing. You know, for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. That's just the way it is. And if I choose to pollute by cranking up my car, then somehow, some way, uh, me taking those elements and turning them into another element or another uh, uh, state of that element then sets about uh, the equal and opposite reaction because that element has been denatured or changed into another, another form of nature. To me, that is completely logical. And I think we can all see why this is an issue. And destroys the, the idea that, that we need to be stepping on people's individual liberty to save the planet. Who is stepping on whose liberty? I think it's a completely and totally asinine uh, religion that these people have. And there's, there's no way that they can step up and show up for sure. All they're doing is just forcing their beliefs on other people. And that's illegal. 
and the Constitution is about preserving the individual liberty of each and every one of its citizens. Okay, again, the US isn't the world. But more importantly, what does the scientific community have to gain by telling people to look after the environment? And surely not doing so is kind of selfish, isn't it? You don't have the right to control my life and I don't have the right to control your life. So we live and let live. And for my action of letting you live, you should have the reaction of letting me live. Ah, okay, we live and let live. Stuff the next few generations coming through, as long as we're all living and let living. Either way, I hope that this has uh, helped enlighten somebody to the fact that there's nothing, nothing that they're saying, nothing that supposed science is saying is set in stone. You know, science is a is an ever-growing, ever-evolving field of research. Completely agree with you. So why aren't you listening then to the current science? Everything that we think we know today will be proven wrong or um, that we didn't understand it correctly in a thousand years, in a hundred years, maybe even in ten years. You know, we think that we're having this effect on the world by doing this, but we're going to find out 10, 20 years down the later down the road that it did not have that effect that we had planned on it having and it had a reaction that we had not expected because we're not all knowing completely true but if you pump billions of tons of co2 into the atmosphere that wasn't there before then what do you think will happen and science is not all knowing and until it's all knowing then we can't know anything for fact the fact is that that everything that we think we know is limited by what we don't know. There are things that we don't know, and the things that we don't know limit what we do know. I'll tell you what we do know, though. Newton's third law of thermodynamics. So we can't know anything for sure unless, of course, we knew everything for sure, because then there would be no way to not know what it is that we, we don't know. The only way to not know what we don't know is to know all. Clear as mud. Right, let's leave Save by Grace here, trying to figure out what he just said and wrap this video up today. Thank you so much for watching today. It truly is appreciated, it really is. If you enjoyed it, then please do like the video and subscribe as well if the feeling takes you. I have been Simon Dan, have yourselves a great week and I'll see you all on Friday where we'll be back for Flat Earth Friday and some Flat Earth observations. See you then.